Hi, I'm Jesse Gabbard, and you're watching Loud Mouth Presents Off the Top Rope. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have got an internationally traveled superstar, Japanese icon, Germany's very own Jazzy Gabbard. Jazzy, how are you, ma'am? It is so nice to have you on our show. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> it's been a long time that we talked. Oh, since 2015. It's been, it's oh, since wow. we've been face to face. Um, yeah. I, I do want to ask a question, though, just straight off the bat. Do you get a normal night's sleep? Because every time I see you, it's it's serious. It's the social media. It's posts. It's so it's content, content, content all the time. Do you actually get a proper night's sleep? No, I'm yeah, I'm a maniac. Like <laughs> like I'm a night person. Like I love to spend my whole night on the phone and doing social media. And then of course daytime I have all like my meetings and yeah, I I, I do it like this. Like I sleep about four hours at night and oh. then uh, let's say from three to four I sleep like one hour. So that's like so five hours every day. So that's okay. Okay. <laughs> There is, and, and you feel that's more than enough for you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, of course, sometimes when I have nothing to do, like when I have like an off day, like that's like once a month or something, then I sleep all day in, you know, like I have okay, like, okay. yeah, I wake up like six o'clock and I'm like, oh, it's so late already. <laughs> okay, I, 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 want to, I want to give every, everybody a bit of context uh, just before we go on and talk about your current projects. Uh, 2015, when Wrestle Monster, uh, at the very first Wrestle Monster show, you came out to South Africa. How was your experience uh, in South Africa and working on the show? Oh man, it's a long time ago, um, but I do remember my flight and everything. It was so funny. <laughs> so uh, when I arrived at the airport, I had milk in my back <laughs> i had like protein milk because you know back in the days i was like super in shape and i really uh was watching what i eat and everything but i knew i'm not a lot like when i arrived there i see like the sign when it says uh you cannot have milk or or meat or something like this yes, yes. so like oh my god i hope they cannot find it because they had a lot of milk there um <laughs> and then there was like these officers like you had to stand in line and then like everyone goes and then had to go yes. to her officer and then she was asking me like weird questions something like do you have sand classes i'm like yeah yeah like show me and i'm like okay so i was like going to my bag watching the sunglasses but then i noticed that like people walking around you know like observing me i'm like okay yeah here are my sunglasses she's like okay fine and then they let me go and i'm like I couldn't find the milk, yes. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then we came to the hotel and it was so beautiful and everyone was so nice to me. And I remember <laughs> that there was like, uh, yeah, like a person, like a one person from the street and he wanted to ask me something maybe for money or something. And then oh, I forgot his name. I think Steve is his name, the officer yes. guy. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. He punched this guy so hard. I'm like, oh my God, what are you doing? And he's like, no one is going to catch, uh, touch our girls. I'm like, he didn't touch me. He just wanted to ask me something like, no, no one is asking you something. <laughs> that was hilarious because usually like I have to defend myself because I'm yes. a big girl. Um, but then he was like, Rrr! and he was like protecting me. And I was, that's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then you discovered South African food. Yes. Because at 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 Mark's at Mark Bill's house, his wife made potato bake. Yeah, and I think you must have had. I know you had more than one helping. <laughs> yes, yeah, it was delicious. Like uh, Mrs. Beal, she is like an extremely good cook, and I absolutely love the food. Do you do you feel Jazzy that that, that you've got some unfinished business because? The, the, the match that you had with, with Shana was a very, very good match, very competitive. 
uh, and you came up a little bit short for for the ladies' championship. Do you feel you that that you've got unfinished business? That um, you know, should should traveling be be allowed, that you'd like to come back to South Africa and and get your hands oh, on that yeah, title? Yeah, absolutely. I would I would love to get that title. You know, so it would be amazing. So hopefully, I mean, I don't know if Shannon has time, but yeah, I would have. I would love to have a rematch. Okay. Right. Let's let's talk about your current projects because there, there there's so many things that you are doing mm. currently. So so let's let's talk about let's talk about serious let's talk about serious entertainment first. Okay. Now, now that is yeah, your pet project. That is your yeah, pet project. Yeah, it's called serious sports entertainment. You know, um, I'm I'm calling it this way because uh, wrestling, the word wrestling, has in my country like a bitterness. Like people ridiculous. You know, they think wrestling is nothing real or wrestling is stupid. So when I actually asked uh, for the venue, I wanted to have like a super special venue, like a really yes. expensive one and expensive looking one. So I write them an email. And I was saying, like, I want to have, like, a, you know, sports show there. But they can see in my email, my email is, like, German wrestling. So they can see the word and they were, like, saying no. I'm, like, please hear me out, you know. Sure, and then sure. they love my idea from my kind of sport, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I want to take away the wrestling and call it sports entertainment. So the people give it a chance, you know, to yes. look at it. Yes. And, yeah, I want to have, like, a... Yeah, a unique kind of show. The the ring will not be in the middle of this of the of the venue. It will be on stage and it will be like a musical. So I will have like dancers and singers and it's going okay. to be uh, different than what you know usually. Right, right. Now now that that concept has that concept come come up because you were traveling with uh, the band and you were involved with with, with their shows uh, and you you saw that that level of production. I had to, yeah, I had the concept since forever, since mm -hmm. I'm young, you know, like since I think uh, 20 years ago, you know, but okay. of course I never had the money or, you know, I never felt ready to do my own show, uh, not having the experience, but of course going on the tour with the rock star with Udo Lindenberg and, you know, being a part of this huge production and seeing how much entertainment there was uh, and also our little wrestling gig we had, it was so much fun. Everyone was dressed up, you know, American and Russian team yes, yes. and we had like singers and dancers. It was so cool and everybody loved our little wrestling number we had there. So I thought, okay, we should really bring this to life. And, you know, I did some brainstorming with my friends and yeah. And also here in Germany, we have so many different companies and really big like WXW, they're huge. Mm -hmm. So competing with them, it makes no sense because they're there for a long time and they have like different kind of connections and a really strong fan base. So I needed to do something different anyway. Of course, of course. Now, now, now you, you, you're you somewhat of a of a European TV darling. Uh, you've been <laughs> on, uh, the, you've been with Monica on, on I believe it's it is so, something similar to uh, Britain's Got Talent. You did, yes. you did a, a, a wrestling thing there. Uh, you've been on a dating show. Uh, there's been other documentaries okay, yeah. and things that you, you seem to be more comfortable in front of the camera than you than you are behind the camera. Uh, has that has that affected how you see yourself and your self image? Uh, because I know with with the oh, lockdown, yeah. it's, like it, it's it's very hard to maintain your image. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, I love to be in front of the camera, not just you know as a fighter, but also as a yeah, TV personality. I love TV and I love to entertain the fans and I love to do different kind of things. Uh, I can remember one time when I did the MMA stuff, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in training, we had to do sparring and I hated sparring so much. It, it hurts for no reason. Nobody sees you or if you're winning or losing, nobody will ever see it. Yes, so yes. I'm not like 100%. And then one day my trainer, he, um, you know, he put me into our um, tournament and there was a lot of TV person there, right? And there was yeah. like a lot of cameras and I was totally different kind of person. I was like, we really energetic and I you know I made a really quick win there and yes. then my trainer said what the hell why can you not be like this in training I'm like well there's no camera there's no need for me to be like that yeah <laughs> so yeah um yeah I love I love tv and I wish I could have like a reality show or something 
um, back in the days when I made my way to Japan, I asked German TV if they want to follow me. But unfortunately, as I said before, wrestling is not really big here in Germany. So they weren't interested. But that's like my dream, having a re my own reality show. <laughs> sure. Okay, you, you mentioned Japan there, and we're going we're gonna to segue into, into your Japanese run, because your Japanese run was really successful, and you were really popular in Japan, and you got to wrestle some of the absolute top talent. Mm -hmm. is, 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 uh, you've mentioned Japan quite a few times going back and, and doing some things. I'm going to ask you a controversial question. Well, it's controversial because of the, of the level of talent. If you could choose your dream Japanese match, would it be a rematch against uh, Hikaru Shida or against Io Shirai? Well, I personally think that the top Japanese talent is Maiko Satomura. So mm -hmm. I really want to have a match against her. Okay. Um, and I do think that Io Shirai is also more on top than Hikaru Shida. Hikaru Shida is really good talent, mm -hmm. um, but not in a Japanese way, if that makes any sense. Like she's okay. really good for American TV and she's like really super entertaining. But I personally think more fitting into the Japanese style and everything mm -hmm. is uh, Io Shirai because okay. she's like really badass and- Right. Now, <laughs> this is gonna seem like a strange question. And I, and I ask it of everybody that's been on tour in Japan. Japanese wrestling seems to focus a lot on uh, the, the pure Risa, the strong style. Do you think that that style of wrestling contributed to your neck injury? Yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely. Um, especially the one silly bump, like there's something like you lay in a corner and the opponent is running at you and forces the knees into the corner. And into oh, yes, you, okay, okay. And your head is just taking like a big... Yeah, impact. Or for example, Yoshirai gave me a few of her drop kicks from behind, like she was on the top rope and drop yes. kicks me from there. Uh, I remember one day, like I fall down, like after the drop kick, and I couldn't feel my hands anymore. So oh. I think that was like the start of something. Um, but of course, as a wrestler, you you try to ignore these kind of signs. Or yeah, and then well. It is what it is, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's why in Japan the, the female wrestlers or even the wrestlers altogether have to retire so early. So they start in an early age, like about eight or ten years old. They go into wrestling, but then have to retire before they even thirty because it's just a really difficult and yeah, strong style. Just yeah. Japanese wrestling. Yeah. Why do they hate necks? You, you say what? Why do they hate the neck? It's specifically the neck. The, neck, the neck. Yeah, all these neck bombs, right? Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, it's know. crazy. It, it may, every time I watch Japanese wrestling, and I will love watching New Japan, and I love watching Shimmer and Stardom and all of these uh, the, these uh, promotions, and when these ladies wrestle and they fall on the back, I'm like, oh, I cannot, I cannot, I cringe. I absolutely cringe. Yeah, you know what? I find a little bit sad, like, um, as from a fan perspective, right? Um, I always see, like, say you get, like, a really nasty uh, German suplex. They mm. celebrate the person doing the German suplex. Like, oh, look at them. He, he, he throw him on the head or something and really celebrate uh, the guy who's doing the move. They yes. should celebrate the person taking it because he's still alive, you know? Uh, yeah, I get you. I get you. Okay. <laughs> on Instagram, um, mm. I believe you that, that you're going to be start, starting to do uh, Instagram workouts as well. Mm, yes, that's like my new little thing. First of all, I need myself some inspiration because I gained uh, too much weight. Um, and also because I cannot do any wrestling at the moment, I want to still deliver something to the fans. You know, um, I cannot post any matches or something. Yes. Um, I mean, I cannot go to the gym at the moment because we all have like a lockdown but mm -hmm. I try to do something from home or you know when I'm on the streets like doing jogging or something yeah I try to deliver some content I don't know I try okay. not to be boring but yeah mm -hmm. let's see how where this journey goes of course of course now you you mentioned you mentioned on another on another podcast that um you wanted to go to America and win a title, a, a, a title there. Do you think that winning a title there would actually validate your career? Or are you happy with 
the, the, the body of work that you've put into your professional wrestling career right now? Uh, it's a really good question. It's also a difficult one. You know, when I started um, my whole journey, um, first of all, there weren't so much female wrestlers and we weren't that appreciated. So I yes. think these days it's so much more easier to be a female wrestler and making actually money. Um, but back in the days, it was real hard struggle. And also mm -hmm. we didn't have so much you know, social media, you know, yes. like the whole Instagram, Facebook and Twitter stuff, it happened like the fi last five years or so that it mm. really went through the top. So today it's so much more easy to become, you know, successful in this business. So yeah, sometimes I'm really sad that I'm not really getting noticed for the stuff I did, you know, um, like winning the Japanese title, for example, it, it was a big deal, you know, but barely anyone cares <laughs> so it's a little bit frustrating yeah, yeah. and okay. maybe maybe i should have gone instead of japan i should have picked you know america um but i guess it is what it is what i had and i like i was so sad like i did the whole nxt like the uh, may young classic and the fans really loved me and then i go to nxt um but they just put me to the nxt uk so i couldn't really showcase who i am and everything because there was just too much politics involved and yeah, yeah. i don't know so yeah i'm a little bit sad how everything went but you know it is what it is i guess yeah. well I, the I people didn't... who like me will remember me and the people who don't well it is yeah <laughs> Well, I, I didn't want I didn't want to mention the WWE stuff because it is, uh, as you mentioned, it's a very painful part uh, part of the process, and you and you'd rather put that aside. So, in, yes. in instead instead of asking about that, okay, I'm going to ask you a few questions uh, about mm -hmm. some of the talent that is out there, okay? And mm -hmm. I just want to I just want your straight answer, one word. Mm -hmm. um, if you can, if you want to, if you want to explain why you said it, you're more than welcome to do so. But okay. I'm just going to put, I'm just going to put the, the the names out there, and then you're more okay. than welcome to answer. Okay. Okay. So we're going to, we, it's just going to be ladies, obviously. So okay. I'm going to start off with uh, Sasha Banks. Oh, I love her. Doing great job. Charlotte Flair. Amazing talent, and she needs to work hard. For her name like that she's going to be appreciated for the person who she is and not the daughter she is but i think she's doing a great job taya valkyrie uh i love her i really want to wrestle her somehow somewhere down the road i love the look she has and i think she's cool All right. uh billy k Mm, she's I have not much her on my radar because she's not the kind of wrestler I enjoy watching but I know okay. she's doing really good promos uh and yeah she's also doing a great job but not my kind of style Oscar I love her man I was so close to have a match against her when she was still Kana so mm. yeah and she's strong and mentally and physically so yeah, she's, she's a cool girl she, she, she. I remember her watching her match with Minoru Suzuki. She really did take a, she really did take a hiding there. That was that was yeah. brutal to watch. So yeah. she's definitely tough. She, absolutely. <laughs> right, Tony Storm. Yeah, amazing talent. Uh, she has a lot of potential. Um, yeah, okay. I hope she will be successful. <laughs> All right, let's go with some of the legends. Bull Nakano. Mm, oh man she was one of the first like her and Madusa was the first girl i saw live uh, they came to germany and yeah they got me hooked <laughs> okay mickey james love her also was um, fortunate enough to meet her uh, lovely personality and great in-ring character april hunter oh the first girl who actually really teach me something. The first girl who was really nice to me. The other always beat me up before, but this mm -hmm. girl, April Hunter, she took the time to teach me and she took the time. I mean, let's be honest, Queens of Carers, what we did <laughs> back in the day in France, it was, it was really bad. Like, please don't watch the matches. Um, but I had like a long, I had like a Iron Man match with her. I think we did like a 30 minute match. Yeah. I was nervous as hell but she took all the yeah pressure off me and yeah 
I love you. Right. The last, the last lady wrestler I'm going to mention. I want your honest opinion about her. Uh oh. <laughs> Jazzy Gabbard. Oh, I, I, she's a cool girl, man. She came a long way, like from her from her gimmick, Jazzy B, to alpha female. Dude, she's a tough girl. <laughs> All right, Jazzy. Uh, there's two, there's last two questions. One, if yeah. you were not a professional wrestler, what mm -hmm. would you have become? That's a good question. Um, you know, I always say wrestling saved my life because I didn't have a good start in this uh, life. Um, and I was really messed up when I was a teenager. Um, so I don't know, maybe I wouldn't be alive anymore. Um, but the jobs I did next to wrestling, um, the one I loved the most was being a security officer. Mm -hmm. So maybe I would have like a really high position in security. So I don't right. know, because I really okay. enjoy this kind of work. But honestly, I think I wouldn't be here anymore if wrestling wasn't there. Okay. Now, the last question, with with serious entertainment, you're, do, you're currently doing a, a, a promo battle. Yes. Now, if, if you guys go on to, on to Instagram, you, you're more than welcome to check it out. All the information is there. You go to JB's, I beg your pardon, you go to Jazzy's Instagram page. It's a lot to get through. Uh, and you can check this out. Jazzy, in your opinion, what makes the best promo? All right. Uh, authenticity. Like, don't play that you are a wrestler, but that's like in general, like right. do not be a wrestler just on the weekends, you know, like be a wrestler full time. Like when you wake up, be a wrestler, you know, have the mindset of a wrestler, do not play it. And and I think that was my uh, success because I always was the alpha female, you know, like yes. wherever I went, I made sure that they know that I am a wrestler and not, I'm not a saleswoman, I'm not this or that, I mm. am a wrestler till today so that of course um yeah being creative but i also think as you see right now the lightning you know and professional mm -hmm. cameras like these days it's not so expensive anymore um right. and just you know have a good lighting have a good personality and whatever if you heal or a baby face and yeah i mean john bad bones clinger for example he has his unique gimmick, you know, and he surprises people by not fitting into a box. Like yes. for example, in his first promo, he started to sing, you know, uh, then in the other promo, he was like a different character, you know, he was serious. And then yes, the other yes. one, he was not so, like he was more funny. So I think it's important, yeah, to entertain the fans with not being a box. Like if you, if you look at someone and he's always the same, he will bore you, you know, but if he like, or he or she will like surprise you from time to time that makes you interesting and that's how you in my tournament can win um and be the promo star but it's in german um i know some people hate me for it and even like my wrestlers always complain they say come on it's so hard to cut promos in german but you know i want to make a difference i'm a german and i have a german company so i want my wrestlers most of the wrestlers speak german Yes. of course i will have clients from america also from japan but i want at least 80 percent of my company to be german right. just because right. you know i want to support my boys and girls and i we have so much great talent and i think we're not getting enough chances i mean look at me it took me 20 years to finally you know be invited to freaking wwe to show what i can do and i nailed it in the freaking may young classic i mean i got standing ovation so I can't be that bad. <laughs> so, but it's a shame that it took so long, you know? So, and I want to put my wrestlers, the girls and boys, you know, in a big spotlight and I want to give them everything they deserve because they work so hard. Right, right. Jay-Z, for the viewers on the uh, on Loudmouth Presents Off The Top Rope, please give us all your, uh, your handles for Instagram, Facebook, where people can find you. Um, and uh, yes, we, we, we wish you the best of luck. 
Thank you so much. Again, thank you for listening to this one and thank you for having me. If you go to my Instagram, Jazzy Garbert, I have in the bio like a link, it's from Linktree, and then you can find everything, Twitter, YouTube, whatever, you know. And if you have any questions or something, please hit me up. Like, don't be scared to writing me. So yeah, you're more than welcome. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Loudmouth Presents Off the Top Rope with my very special guest, such a beautiful, beautiful lady outside and in. Jazzy Gabbard, I love you very much. Thank you very much for Thank being on the show. So